Okay, now, most people, when you talk to most people, they think that they can tell what race somebody is just by looking at them. They look them up, head up and head down, and, uh-huh, I know she white, I know she black, I know she light, I know she Asian, right? A lot of people go, oh, I can tell. I can tell by looking at people. Now, before this show, everybody in this studio audience guessed the race of all of our guests here today. And the overwhelming majority of this audience guessed that Jenna is black, Tabitha is Hispanic, Janelle is Hispanic, and Sun is black. Now, the truth is that all of these women are actually bi or multiracial. But get this, everybody, they hate one part of their racial identity so much that they're insulted when someone tries to make them claim that or represent that or just own at that being a part of them. We're going to start with Jenna. So Jenna, Jenna, you are what? Tell us what your mix is. I am black and white. I'm biracial. OK, so you're black and white, biracial. But I only claim the white side. You only claim the white side. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you only claim the white side. Um, I think the audience, why are we grumbling, audience? Anybody? <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling. She looks black, that's yeah. why. So I would, yeah. Yes. Jenna, there's what? a difference between looking black and you don't have to be black. I'm not just black. I am white too. I don't just only show my white side. Yes. Or my black side. I mean, tell me about black people and what they mean to you and how you feel about black people. Um, I don't care for them. I really don't. <laughs> It's just, I don't care for them for the way they act, the way they talk. They just, they just kind of seem to do their own thing and they're unpredictable. One minute they can be, you know, themselves and, and it's not all black people. It's just mainly inner city blacks that I'm scared to death of. I really scared am. of them. You're yeah. scared of black people? Yeah. Okay. And tell me about babysitting. I understand there's certain kids you won't babysit. Yeah, I won't babysit black kids because they're crazy. They're, 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 they're loud. In the mirror, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? Tell me what you see when you look in the mirror. Me? I see me. I don't see a color to me. I... No, Jenna, you're not colorblind, so you do see a color. I do see a color. So what color do you see when you look in the mirror? I'm not talking about spiritually, figuratively, inside. I'm talking about with your eyes when you look in the mirror. I would love to see white. But what do you see? I see black. Okay. But... So. Okay, so tell me, tell me why you would love to see white. Tell me what makes you upset. Because that you they see have black. a higher standard in America. <laughs> they, they are a higher standard. Okay. Yeah. Or, or if I was even just lighter skinned, I would just have a higher, you know, a higher personality. I don't, know, I don't want to say personality, but I would have a higher being. A higher I being. I would be more important. I'd be more accepted in the way I live my life. Okay. Now tell me about. There's a certain flag that you carry and that you Yeah, sport. I have my rebel flag. Um, Explain I what a rebel it. flag is. It just means... <laughs> <laughs> I guess we don't have to explain what a rebel flag is. No, it's just a flag. There is nothing serious about it. I mean, people need to get over it. It, is, it never meant, you know, it's that, that's why I don't like being claimed as black, because it doesn't mean, you know, oh, just because you're, you're white and you have a rebel flag, you're racist. You don't do you have under, you, you have that flag for a reason. Yeah, I, I have it because it's just, it's part of me. It's a part of my cult. I don't want to, yeah, culture. It's just a part of me. It's who I am. Do you understand that the people that carried that flag years and years ago, hundreds of years ago, the people that carried that flag yeah, okay. wanted to burn you? Do you understand okay, but that? See, but see, I look at it as, you know, that was in the past. Okay, get over it. Step up. Do something different. Get over it. It's a flag. Okay, so tell me where you carry that flag. Um, I have two in my bedroom, and I had one in my car. One in your car? Yeah. And then you go to rodeos? Tell yeah, me about I go the to the rodeo. I love the rodeo. Like, one time I went to the rodeo. I mean, I'm not always accepted. I went to the rodeo, and everybody looked at me like, what is she doing here, you know? There's no reason for her to be here. But when I finally just sat down, put my chew in, and just relaxed, they were like, you know, she's just like us. I mean, and do you carry the flag at the rodeo? Oh no, I carry. I have every year. It's turned into a tradition where 
I am um, at the fair right after our shelling or sometime. I will run around the fair with my rebel flag and just everybody's behind me cheering and everything. There's nothing. Okay. And tell me about, you were at the bowling alley one day and you called a girl something. Well, I was at the bowling alley and this girl had started in on me like, you know, calling me, oh, so you think you're a white girl, so you think you're a white girl and everything. And then all of a sudden. What, what race was she? She was mixed. Okay. She was also, mixed she was with, lighter than I was. Okay, mixed with black and white? Yes. Okay. And she was like, you know, all like, oh, so you think you're a white girl. And the next thing you know, she started in with the N-word. And she was like, N-word, N-word. I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, what are you talking about? And I just go, I said it, you know. And to me. But you called her that or she called you that? Well, I, I don't understand how it came about, period, though. She just kind of came out and said it. I and then I just, that. I said it back to her. Okay. Okay. And then, but to me, the N-word does not just mean a black person. I did a show on bleaching. Yes. About black women bleaching their skin because they hated their skin so much. How many people saw that show? You guys saw that show? Okay. Okay, a lot of you guys saw that show. Okay, so you saw that show. What did you think when you saw that show? I was, I was so happy. I was like, it shows, you know, it, it, it helped me. So that, was, that show was a tutorial for you? Yeah. Not a message of something being negative and can cause... No. Damage to your skin, damage to your health? No. And damage I, I, to your well-being and your no, spirit? No, it, it didn't because, I mean, it, I want to be lighter. My brother is lighter than I am. I want to be like him. That's how he is, you know. Okay. I wish I could be as light as he is. I think something happened when you were young that is making you feel this way. Um, we're going to go to a break in a little bit, but before we do, I want to show everybody a picture of Jenna. So explain this photo. If you read, it looks like it a KKK. Says, it looks like a KKK um, mask it, or a hood. It, it's made out of a pair of jeans. I hang out in the parking lot. We hang out. It, it's a total joke. It even says, "JK, JK." It's just a joke. I mean, so when you do it's something just, that's it's, to me, it's just a joke. It's nothing serious. I look at it and I laugh. I'm like, whatever, dude. Get over yourself. And no, that's Jenna, how it is. it's not a joke. It doesn't matter. A lot of people say that and they try to use that as an excuse to do something crazy and then say, oh, I was just joking. You hate yourself. You want to bleach yourself. You carry a rebel flag. You do not like the black side of you. You look in the mirror and you want to see white. You put on a KKK mask and say that's just a joke. That's not a joke. There's a serious issue. We'll be right back. <laughs> Tabitha, what nationality are you? I am Latina. You're Latina. And white. Latina and white. And what do you identify with? Just Latina. I do not claim my white side. Why not? Um, you know, I think that white people are judgmental. And I don't think that they have heritage and tradition and family bonds. You know, I don't, I don't feel like they, I feel like they're very close-minded. I don't mean to, no, you know, particularly point this towards you. No, but Jenna's I like very excited very... right now that you're looking at her talking about white people and looking at her. You don't have to apologize. I'm sure she's like, yay! <laughs> as negative as it is and as hurtful as what you're saying, I think she's I feel she's like, uh, you know, they're, they're just, they're unaccepting and judgmental and, you know, these are the people that their brother lives around the corner in a trailer park, but yet they have the audacity to speak about low-class Latinas Okay, Mexicans but you're talking about white people in a general sense of hating them. Let's talk specifically. Just like I said, the Jenna has specific reasons why she is the way that she is. You have specific reasons. Um, I mean, they... I've had so many situations growing up. I grew up in a very small white town. I was the only brown girl up until I was uh, in high school. Mm -hmm. um, I remember, you know, getting ready for a test in fourth grade, and they uh, specifically told me, no, you cannot mark white, you will mark other. I mean, this is in front of everybody in the whole entire class. Um, situations like this, I remember going to my boyfriend, who at the time was white, and his parents not letting me in the house. And I didn't realize at the time, but now I look back and I say, I don't want to be part of that. Why That's... does it make you hate all white people or whiteness or denounce the whiteness? Why does it not make you hate those specific people? I've experienced a lot of racism and a lot of white people telling me I can't do this, I can't do that. No, you're not going to be able to cover this magazine. No, you're not going to buy that magazine on a newsstand. No, you can't walk into this store without being followed. There's a lot of things I that I've experienced that doesn't any, make me hate I all white people. I haven't had anybody prove me wrong. 
Every situation that I every came white across, person is bad. No, I wouldn't come say across? bad, but yes, they all have the same views practically. They all look at things in the same. In my in, in my experience, in my experience that I have had, I have I feel like yes, they look at me different. I. They, they don't treat me the same. Yes, my father is half white. I've never, ever been looked at as white, which I don't have a problem with that. I am completely, 100% fine with that, but that is why I look at that, them in that sense. Okay, let's go on to Giselle. Am I saying that right? Yes, Giselle. Giselle. What's your nationality again? I'm actually black and Puerto Rican. You're black and Puerto Rican, and you consider yourself? Black. Black. Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay. I don't necessarily think the audience sees that. But that's what you're that's what you are. That's what this show is about. It's breaking yeah. the stereotype, but then it's a little little deeper. We're talking about you not liking so you don't like your Puerto Rican side? No. Why not? Um well <laughs> um we have Puerto my... Ricans in the audience today. <laughs> oh. Okay. So they're not feeling too good about that. So tell me what you don't like about your Puerto Rican side. Um well my mother's black and I really don't know my father's side, so I was only raised on that side, so, you know, it's about a, I guess it's a cultural thing. Mm -hmm. I'm more comfortable with claiming my African-American side. I feel like I have more in common with them. Um, I've experienced situations where um, somebody has been like, oh, you know, since you don't know Spanish, you're a disgrace to your race. Like, you're Puerto Rican, it's in your blood, you're supposed to know it. And you shouldn't judge me. Like, don't judge me, I won't judge you. Tell me what you think about Spanish girls. I know you tell my producer you think they're trashy? No. <laughs> That's what you said. I said where I live at, where I live at, I personally don't like how they dress. Like, that's just my personal opinion. Like, <laughs> where... let, me, let me talk to a, who's a Puerto Rican girl. Puerto Rican girl, want to talk? You want to talk? Are you Puerto Rican? Yeah. What do you have to say about that, Jennifer? By I the way, I think you're do. dressed gorgeously right now. Thank you. <laughs> See, that's not a lot much better. And you're what? African American only? Yeah. Well, no. where I live, like, I don't know where you live, but where I live, I just don't like how they dress. They wear tight, skinny jeans with sneakers, and that's just something I don't prefer. To I do. wear tight, skinny jeans with sneakers sometimes. Like, okay, we'll be right back. Challenging people's ideas about what it means to be one race or another by asking the question, can you guess my race? Now, before the show, this entire audience saw pictures of all three of the women that are on our stage right now, and they tried to identify these women by their race. 64% of our audience thinks Candace is mixed Hispanic and black. 77% of our audience thinks Adria or Adria is biracial, black, and white. 90% of our audience said that Marvell is biracial, black, and white. So, all of you guys, can you tell us what your race is? I am 100% African American. My mother is black, my father is black, so that makes me black. Okay. <laughs> Adria? 100% black and proud. Okay. Marvell? I'm 100% African American. 100% African American. Okay. How many of you guys are shocked? Obviously, it's shocked. Somebody just said shocked. So I'm sure this response of the audience going, oh my gosh, is, is nothing new to you guys. Um, Candace, tell me when, when people see your hair and your skin with you being a woman of color or a black woman, what do they think and how does that make you feel? Every day of my life, I get people coming up to me, oh, your hair is so nice, you light skin, like, what are you? Are you like Puerto Rican? I've heard people ask me, am I Indonesian, Dominican? Um, part white, and I'm just like, you know, I'm 100% African American. I mean, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Do they, do they seem disappointed when you yeah, say that? Yeah, you're like, they're so, you're so yeah. exotic looking. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, um, Adria, tell me about your, you had a white classmate, and she had mixed kids. Yeah, she came up to me in school one day, and she decided to ask, oh, um, are you mixed? No. Oh, really, you're not? Oh, because both of my kids are. See, here are their pictures. Oh, I was just wondering what they'd look like when they get older. How can I determine what your kids will look like? Wow. Okay. And um, Marvell, tell me um, about the speeding ticket that you got. Yes, I actually got a speeding ticket, and the cop didn't ask me what was my race. He just assumed that I was white. He just checked white. 
Got it. And do you think that your lives are harder because you are of mixed race, and but when your lineage, the direct lineage, is, is black or African American? It definitely makes things more complicated for me. Um, I'm a black woman, and I'm very proud of who I am and where I come from. But not only do I have to deal with what, what goes on, the racism from ignorant people who are of other races, you have to deal with the poor mindsets of people who are African American mm -hmm. who think, okay, she's light skinned, so she must think she's cute, or she must think she's better than me, or she gets more advantages, and I'm not like that. I just want to say, you know, not every person is like that. You need to take each person for who they are. Well, I have Janelle here in the audience. You can stand on up, Janelle. Um, you feel that there are a lot of advantages. Tell me about how you see yourself and then how you feel you, the world or you look at these women on the stage. Well, being both African American, we all go through hard times and struggles. But to be a darker skinned African woman, uh, African American woman versus someone who is assumed to be mixed, my struggles are definitely a lot harder than yours would be. I heard you say that you know people assume that you're mixed, and then they that you go and they say, "Where are you from? Are you from Indonesia?" The excitement that they feel for you is the contempt that they feel towards me. When I walk into a room. I'm slave black, that's it. That means I'm dark. What is slave black? That means that I'm really dark skinned. There's no other way. All the bad stuff associated with I black people. I have been black for 34 years. I have never heard slave black. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like sometimes you can pass maybe for mixed or maybe white. They're, when you're slave black, you can't pass for anything what, other than black. Did you make this up? <laughs> that's what it, yes. You yes. made up slave black. Okay, because there were a lot of slaves of all different colors. Yes, but, there were. But, but when I say that, that's my express saying all the negative connotation. Like, you remember the field versus the house? Got it. I'm yes. in the field. There's no but way. But that's exactly the problem, the slave mentality, the connotation that being light or looking more like Massa is better. I, than a person right. who is darker skin. Right. That's not my problem. That's society's problem. You can't change everybody, but you can change yourself when those girls and how in, you think of yourself. When those type of girls walk into a room, is there a contempt that you feel inside? It's not more of a contempt, but it's more of a there's always going to be, you guys have it a lot easier. And from the moment that we walk in to a room together, it's evident. When I look at TV, it's evident. You can identify with the people you see on a commercial. I can't 90% of the time. You can walk into a, a store and find hair products and makeup that works for you. I can't. When people walk up to me, are you from a different country? Are you maybe from, like, are you maybe Guyanese or something? No. Oh. Like, they're almost disappointed okay. because about, I'm just tell me, black. Tell me about your issues that you had about you were ostracized so much and you wanted to be darker. Yeah, people picked on me that I wanted to be of a darker complexion because I felt like, oh, okay, well, if my skin was brown, I wouldn't get called mellow yellow, light bright. I wouldn't get, Talk you know, it. oh, your hair is so nice. Oh, your skin is so that's light. I mean, that's not fair to automatically <laughs> your assume. Your hair is so nice? Have oh, you yeah. ever been told, oh, you're pretty for a dark skin girl? And I've been told, Repeatedly. Oh, repeatedly. Repeatedly. But have you ever been told by someone, oh, well, you know what, when I first met you, I didn't like you because of the color of your skin? Yes, we all have been told that one. But to have no friends because of something like that? Okay, but I know that when... And I'm talking about somebody of your complexion. We became friends later, but she said, oh, yeah, when I first saw you, I automatically didn't like you. That's well, not fair to me. You didn't even get a chance to get to know me. That's true, but that affects both of us. There are always okay. going to be people who judge like I that. I have a solution right here. <laughs> Y'all got more in common than you think. Of course. Because you're on the opposite ends of the spectrum, right? It's like... It's this competition of... Well, let me tell you how bad I have it. Well, let me tell you, I had to hike up mountains barefoot. And the next person is, well, I had to crawl on my knees and they bled. It's like, it's all pain. And you guys have more in common than you think. I'd rather, instead of you guys fighting across the stage, I want you to go up on the stage. And in the commercial break, talk about those common mistakes and start with the, uh, the, common, uh, the commonalities that you guys have. And I think this is a, a, a lot of black folks are watching this right now. A lot of black people are watching this right now. This is a big step for us as a people. We'll be right back.
misconceptions about being black, white, or biracial by asking the question, can you guess my race? Now, we just heard from women who were upset that the audience guessed that they were mixed race when they were actually 100% African American, at least from their immediate family. But joining us are women who say it's not their race, but their nationality, the country that they're from that people get wrong. So we're going to start with Yolanis. So Yolanis, um, where do people say they think that you're from? They think that I am from Mexico and, or Mexican. Uh, and what nationality are you? I'm from Nicaragua. Nicaragua. I love how you say that, Nicaragua. <laughs> Very sexy. 79% of the audience thought that you were Mexican. So um, how does that make you feel when they think that, that people think that? That makes me angry. I feel like people are just ignorant and they just don't know. Um, Mexicans are related. They, everybody thinks that they are immigrant, that they don't have papers in school. Everybody was like, oh, she's a Mexican immigrant. You know, um, they think that they all live in one, that all 30 of them live in a household, that all 30 of them go in a car and they drive inside that car. They think so many things They about think them. or you think? Oh, and um, actually, I feel the same way. Cause okay, I, I, I thought you did. I'm like, it's like we say they, 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 but you really are trying to say that you think that. I live in a place where there's lots of Mexicans and this does happen. And actually, you can go to the supermarket and it makes you feel very uncomfortable because the Mexican men, they'll stare you down. Like, they can see you like as if you were naked. And I just don't want to be associated with something like that because I'm Have not you ever been to way. Italy or France? The Italian men, bella, bella, como stai, bella. Oh, mademoiselle, bonjour, viens ici. Le, le, le. It ain't just the Mexicans or the brothers. Yo, baby, what's up? You looking good. <laughs> or the white boys. Oh, my God, you're so hot. Damn. <laughs> hot. It's not just the Mexicans. OK, enough of that little humor from all around the world. Mercedes, what do people think you are? They either think I'm from Spain or Italian. And what are you? I'm actually Mexican. You're from Mexico. Oh. So you must feel very, OK, let's, okay, let's get this. <laughs> Less than 1% of our audience guessed your nationality correctly. Less than 1%. Okay, so you're Mexican. How does it make you feel when people think that you are white? It makes me mad because, like, you, I, you can tell my color, but people don't usually, they just see you for your color. They don't ask you. They don't, they don't think otherwise. You'd be like, oh, she's white. That's, her, that's what she, basically what she is. I understand you come from a very proud Mexican family, so it hurts when you hear that. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's go on to Eunice. Eunice, 87% of our audience guessed that you were Chinese. Are you Chinese? I am Korean. Korean. Yes. <laughs> so, how does it make you feel that the majority of people think that you are Chinese? I know that's your life, not just this audience. Um, it really upsets me, um, especially because when I was younger, a lot of people teased me about being Chinese. They called me Ching. They were like, can you see out of your slit eyes? Um, they called me like Ching Ching Chang Chong. They said a lot of negative things about They called you what? I'm sorry. Ching, like, they said Ching Ching Chang Chong. Like, they would taunt me whenever I walked down the hallway Okay, I've never heard that before. Okay. And so you, you say people assume certain things about you. What do they assume? Um, they think that I eat cats. They think that, um, they think that I'm good at math and I'm actually really, really bad at math. They think that my parents own a laundromat or a Chinese restaurant and they don't. I, mean, I don't understand the cat thing. That's like a crazy stereotype. Okay, let's go to Margo. Margo, um, what nationality do, are, do people think you are? Well, most people think I'm Korean. And you are? Chinese. Okay, so she's saying all these things about Chinese people in such a negative way. Well, I find it really offensive. Um, people think that you're Korean. Yeah. So people think that you're her. Yeah, exactly. Nationality. I find people who think I'm Korean really f offensive just because I live in a Korean community um, and I grew up with a lot of Koreans and I just think I have a low opinion of them just because I think that they're really materialistic and they're really petty and they always have to have designer things even though you know they just want it because it's designer and they just think that they're more superior than all other Asian nationalities. So the whole like the Latina sisters and our Asian sisters are just <laughs> it's like 
self-destruction. You know what I mean? It's like, it is so sad. To, and we, we saw it earlier with the light-skinned black girls and the darker-skinned black girls. And it, this shows that this is not a black-white issue. I think it is so important that you guys are here today. And I think the Latinas and the Asian women are overlooked a lot in society to understand that this is an issue with you guys, too. Not something you should be proud of, I'm saying. But it, it, it really does show that this is a cross-cultural problem that we have of this inter interracial hating of each other. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. 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 And, I, and I find it really sad. Come on, Korean Chinese sisters. It's sad that I feel more connected to Chinese people than you do, and you're Korean. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, my, my partner on America's Next Top Model, his name is Ken Mok, and he's Asian. He's Chinese. And we call each other, you know, mama, sister, brother from another mother, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but there's a connection that I feel because he's a man of color. So that's where I get that strength and connection to him. Um, and I, it's, it hurts me that you guys can't see that bond. We'll be right back. For the next phase of our Guess My Race experiment, we're asking the audience if they think they can determine someone's race based on three things other than their skin color. We've got two guests behind the screen, so we can't see what they look like. Our first guessing criteria is the way they speak. Guess number one, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm from Virginia Beach. I'm a single mother, I'm a surgical tech, and I am a guest radio DJ. Okay, number two, tell us where you live and what you do for a living. I live in Long Island, and I am a dual major and a part-time model. All right, our next clue is their hobbies. Guest number one loves to dance and goes clubbing. Guest number two loves to swim, was a cheerleader, plays soccer, ice hockey, and softball. The last clue is their personal style. Let's see the way guest number one dresses. Okay, now let's see how guest number two dresses. Okay, audience, it's time to guess. What race do you think guest number one is? Black. Just yell it out. Black. 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 Spanish. Black. Okay, I'm hearing black and Spanish. And what race do we think guest number two is? White. White? white. white. Italian? I, white and Italian. OK. So for guest number one, I heard a lot of, for guest number one, I heard a lot of black and Hispanic. For guest number two, I heard a lot of white. And I heard a couple people say Italian. So step on out. Confused audience? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, number one, guest number one, her name is Terilyn. What is your race, Terilyn? Um, I am Caucasian completely. 100% Caucasian. 100% white. Correct. Audience? <laughs> what do you have to say? Stand on up. Oh. What's your name? Stand on up. Oh. Hi, I'm Hi. Kara. Hi. Um, I just said I didn't guess it. I guess you're black. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting because even standing in front of us, I, I see like a black woman. Yeah. Interesting. I agree. I would have thought, like, seeing you, that you were partially black at least. Yeah, no, me too. I'm a European mixture, that's it. Interesting. Okay, and Maram, what nationality are you? I'm Middle Eastern. Middle Eastern. Okay. Yeah. So, I think this experiment is really interesting because we were talking about not just how people look, but hobbies. Because you know how people say you act white or you talk white or your sport is white or this or that or black or whatever it is, you dance black. So, Terrilyn, what do you do for a living? I'm a surgical tech and a radio DJ for a guest on the internet. Okay, so you're a radio DJ. Right. So, do people hear your voice over the internet? Right. And, and they then assume... they go to my MySpace and they'll be like, wow, you're white. Okay. <laughs> you're so, white. What have you been called? Uh, NL. What's um, NL? Oh, okay, I think mm -hmm. I know who that is. Okay, mm -hmm. what else? Um, you know, a wigger when I was in school when I was little, or, okay. you know, little wannabe red girl. Uh, an older couple said to you what? Oh, when I was in the store and I had my mixed race son, she came up to me and she was Caucasian and she said, um, how dare you? You should try to embrace your race and not somebody else's when mm -hmm. I'm really just trying to be myself. I like what I like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Maram, you're a Middle Eastern yes, young lady. Um, now you tell me the issues that you have with, you know, liking hockey and doing all of these things and being a Middle Eastern girl. A lot of people per, um, persuade or think of me as being Indian, black, white, and they never think that I'm Middle Eastern. 
And after 9-11, you know, I had a hard time figuring out, you know, who I was and accepting who I am. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, you know, call me a terrorist, they call me a sin, they call me a camel jockey. And it was horrible, the amount of crucial torment, you know, tormented behaviors that I got from, you know, from different people. So I understand you tried to do things to soften your ethnicity. Yeah. What do you do? Um, well, I started modeling and I wear a lot of trendy clothes. I lighten my hair and a lot of people think that I'm Spanish and they're like, it's impossible. You're not covered up. You're not wearing a headscarf. How is it possible that you're a Muslim? And then the minute I tell them I'm Muslim, they say you should die. You're a terrorist. You know, you should go to hell. It took me such a long time to finally accept myself. And now that I, you know, I've accepted who I am, they won't accept me. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've, I heard I've that been... you. I heard you put your scarf on at home and look in the mirror as well and wish that you can do that. Well, I've in tried the to wear it, you know, and I'm just so ashamed of, of practicing my religion in public. Mm -hmm. People treat me like, you know, like I'm a terrorist and that I belong, you know, um, you know in hell and that I should be deported. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry for that. I'm so sorry mm -hmm. that you have to live that day to day. But the great thing is, it's not going to always be that way. Whenever there's some type of tragedy, we love to group certain people to blame them and say that you are the reason for this. Every single one of you is the reason for this. It happened to almost every culture in this room. We'll be right back. <laughs> the women on this show have expressed a lot of ambivalence and a lot of negativity about their race. So I can't think of a better time to remind everybody just how important it is to embrace our diversity and the many, many absolutely beautiful, gorgeous, beauty and shades that there are in this world. Check this out, I'm proud of this, check it out. I was honored when I was asked to appear on the cover of Ebony Magazine. Welcome to my sneak peek of my photo shoot, my Ebony cover. We're here with five of my favorite top model girls. We've got Marvita, Fatima, Brie, Dominique, and Takara. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a beautiful picture showcasing and highlighting the beautiful different skin tones of the girls on America's Next Top Model. It is so important to me to have a variety of different skin tones within the black community represented on Top Model. So my girls, we're gonna do a group shot today and it's going to be fabulous. And I hear we're going to be lying down. All right, let's go to hair and makeup now, come on. That's right. You guys get to see me getting the glam treatment. For the shot with all of the girls, I wanted us to look really natural. So we're all gonna have just like white t-shirts on because it's about skin tone and natural beauty. But for me, it ain't about natural beauty because I got a lot of hair on and about this much makeup. <laughs> you know, kind of natural. It's time for me and my top models to rock this ebony photo shoot. So I finished the shoot with some of my favorite top models. Now it was time for me to move on to the cover. And I was making sure I was smiling with my eyes. Oh, I like that. I'd love for all of you to go pick up a copy of Ebony Magazine. It's on newsstands right now. And it's a really, really good article. I gave the, the uh, writer a lot of access and really poured my heart out. I'd really love for you to read it. Um, we'll be right back.